Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about things that are going on in your community so that you can get a better sense of all of the many kinds of ways in which this community is working to make your life so much better. We focus on quality of life issues, and today, of course, we have some special guests that will share some information with you about an exciting initiative. It's called the Alliance for Opportunity and Development, and it was established primarily to provide educational training and other opportunities for low-income families in our community. And this organization, which we'll refer to as AOD, is making a difference. I want to introduce you to two individuals at this time. Tony Russell is the secretary yes. of the Alliance for Opportunity and Development. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Kenny. It's good to have you here today. It's good to be here. Thank you. And John Bunham is a board member of the Alliance for Opportunity and Development, which is always a mouthful, so that's why we say AOD. <laughs> Welcome, John. Hey, thank you for having me, Kenny. It's Appreciate good, it. Good to have both of you guys. You've been on the scene for a while now, and you've had a chance to actually do some things and measure some of your success. And we want to talk a little bit about what's been happening with the organization uh, through the course of our discussion this afternoon. But first of all, I think it's always important for people to know who are you? Because a lot of people would not know who the Alliance for Opportunity and Development is. And I know that you all have been working hard so that more and more people will know exactly who you are. I've already introduced the fact that you represent a certain population of people that you target. But tell us a little something about your organization. Well, primarily, like you said, Kenny, we are a 503C uh, nonprofit organization. 501C3? 501C. Yes. There we go. 501C3. 501C3. <laughs> You're correct. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Christian based organization. And what we do is primarily provide scholarships for low income families to enhance their education and training opportunities. That's what we do, and that's why we're here. Uh, we have the name Alliance for Opportunity and Development because we want to use that word, that word alliance, the A, to partner with different organizations throughout the community so that we can accomplish our mission and our goal. Yeah. I love the marriage between education and opportunity because sometimes the only thing that stands between a person and success is the fact that they haven't had an opportunity to do something. Mm -hmm. So for you to take a tangible thing like scholarship funds and be able to place it in someone's hands through a process, this absolutely ensures that somebody's going to be able to achieve their goal. So talk to me a little bit about the process. I live in Huntsville, Madison County. Is this the population area that you serve? And I'm interested in, let's say, going back to school and uh, improving the quality of my life. Where does this process begin for the average person out there that may benefit from your services? Go ahead, John. Well, well, the process begins with an individual going to AOD's website, right? We partner with a university here, and uh, I'll just leave, uh, we'll mention the university. We partner with Drake State, mm -hmm. and what we do is we, uh, we have individuals apply for the scholarship off of our website. Then we go through an evaluation process to allow those individuals to come in. We meet them, we talk to them, we find out what their goals, dreams, and desires are. Is, and there, we, a, is there a committee that does that? Oh yes, the three, the, the board members of AOD. We okay. do that ourselves, okay. and uh, we, we, we uh, like I said, we do that interview with the, uh, the, the, the folks that applied for mm -hmm. the scholarships. And of course, you have to make it through the process. You just don't get to show up. There's some things that is required on the, uh, on the application. So tell, us a little, yeah, tell us a little something about what those things are. One of the things are, we ask that, uh, you know, you, you have a driver's license, first of all, because you got to get back and forth to school. You have motor transportation. You have uh, uh, some kind, you, you have something that can marry up, <clears throat> excuse me, marry up to Drake State. You know, for example, if a guy want to go out and try uh, HVAC, Right, Drake State has a great HVAC program. He may apply for that program uh, through our scholarship, right? Uh, and he's working toward that. And we step in, and then we fill gaps for where where the individual can't receive, don't have certain funds, like for Pell, Pell grants and things like that. They're short, so we fill the gap there. So that's so, some of the things we do. So you kind of stand in and maybe provide for that shortfall in those situations. I, I want to ask though, because people are watching and they're probably kind of curious right now, because I mean, isn't the whole idea? of most people's lives to pursue a better education so that they can get a little bit further in life. And, and so that's on a lot of people's agenda. We know that. And so let's say, use the HVAC example, John. Uh, let's say, for instance, I'm interested in a, in a particular career area. Are you saying that because the partnership with Drake provides opportunities for you to work together, you kind of have to be in line with something that Drake offers 
in order to provide that. Is that what that, I would understand from that? That is correct, Kenny. And the reason for that is because our executive director, Gary Mathis, the founder of this organization, that's his goal and that's his vision. He mm -hmm. wants to do that technical type yeah. training sure. because he ran into a situation where he found someone needed it. And he said, wow, this is my niche in life, if you will. We're going to help people get this type of training. Yeah, you know, I would never, you know, and I don't, I, I would only imagine what your thoughts are about technical training, but, you know, I've called plumbers before. <laughs> yes. I've replaced an air conditioning unit before. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on, guys. I yes. mean, this is solid work. I oh, mean, yes. no one should ever use a term like, oh, I'm just a carpenter. You know, I'm just a person that works with wood. I'm just a plumber. I'm just a mechanic. Are you kidding me? The money that I've spent over the years <laughs> at those kinds of industries? Those industries, the nursing industry, the HVAC industry, the welding industry, these are things that everybody in some form, shape, form, or fashion will need throughout the entire year. When they're putting up buildings, guess what? They need folks to weld and put in HVAC. When folks get sick, guess who they call? They call the nurse. So these technical skills that people can acquire through AOD's help and partnering with Drake State, it's life-changing and everlasting, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just so wonderful that you all can have that kind of a partnership because, again, for me, it's the marriage of education and opportunity. It's this whole notion of a person who has a dream can actually fulfill that dream. Mm -hmm. There's a tangible pathway in which a person can achieve whatever it is that they want. And I imagine you work with a lot of people who have had life situations yes. where they were living their life <laughs> and something happened to them. Without, of course, revealing any names or anything, talk about some of the circumstances of the people that you've worked with, because I think that's important to know, too. A lot of people give up, but there are people who push through adversity, and there, there are people that do it because somebody says to them, there's hope. You can have a second chance, yes. and we're going to keep moving you forward. So I wish you all would just talk a little bit about some of the challenges that you've seen being faced by some of the people you've served. Actually, one of our first scholarship recipients yes was in her second year of receiving her drafting degree. And she received a scholarship from us, and we were able to help her get a job at a local aviation company. And she's doing extremely well there. But through that whole process, Kenny, it was, it was a tedious process because she had other needs other than the scholarship. And we graciously provided for some of those needs as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here's what I'll say, you use the word hope, and if you break it down, it says having opportunity presented every day, right? If you have that opportunity present, presented to you every day, and what AOD is trying to do is make sure we can fill a void and allow folks to know you have, an, you have hope, you have an opportunity that's going to be presented to you every day. All you have to do is reach out and grab it, and we'll be there to help. You know, life knocks people down oh, yeah. consistently even people who appear to have it going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Life will come up and knock you down. And that word hope is a word that all of us oh, yeah. can lean on and depend on. And when you add the whole notion of hope to, again, tangible methods by which a person can move beyond the adversity, the despair, the hopelessness, the negativity that they may be surrounded by, this is exactly what I imagine AOD represents to people. And I agree with you, Kenny. It's amazing that during the scholarship process, people look at us and say, man, I don't know what I would do without you guys. And that just makes us feel good because you're giving back to the community, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I caveat what Tony says. You, you asked the question of some of the adversities. You know, when folks figure, you know, when people think there's, there is no hope, you know, I, my rent is due. Uh, I live in substandard. Or how do I get above this mountain? How do I climb out of this crater, right? And when someone can throw an opportunity rope to you and tell you, listen, I'll be there to help you out all the way, then you know that, that, you know, that, is, that portion is taken care of. So now maybe I can pay my rent or now I can uh, have the light bill or have some food or something that, uh, you know, give you back some kind of dignity. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. Well, that's important. That's another important word when we start thinking about the whole aspect of hope and people who are trying to achieve something in life, just that whole sense of dignity. Yes. We all want to feel like as if we have worth and we have value and that we can do it for ourselves. A lot of pride involved with trying to raise a family mm -hmm. and trying to sustain oh, yeah. oneself. And so, uh, as I said, life happens again. And then you've referenced a couple of things, but you know, I'm sure you work with people who have all kinds of 
challenges as it relates to financial uh, despair, exactly. oh, yeah. uh, transportation yes, issues, yes. medical problems, yes. family matters Ooh. and family dysfunction. <laughs> I mean, just, you've got all these different things out there. Just the whole notion of people that are just unhappy because they haven't been able to uh, move as, as uh, you know, at fast as fast ahead as they would like to mm -hmm. and as fully forward as they would choose to. They feel a little bit depressed about that, and that's understandable. So you can give them that sense of hope. And you mentioned something, Kenny, uh, about hope. We found through some of our scholarship recipients that they do need extra help, such as finances, transportation, or whatever the case may be. And we were able to partner with other organizations where we can say, hey, this is not what we do. However, we can point you in a direction for someone that can help you get your vehicle repaired. So you that alliance come in. Yeah, right, right, right. You can be a, a resource oh, yeah. yes. to people in a variety of different ways, mm -hmm. which is outstanding. Uh, so the Alliance has been around for a while, and you all have done a variety of things. Tell us about some of the ongoing things that you do on a regular basis or on a recurring basis. Well, one of the things that I'm, I'm excited about and always going to be excited about is our annual uh, job fair. Uh, annual career fair, that's what I'll call it, our annual career fair. And uh, this, is our, this year was our third year to have that annual uh, our career fair. And it was amazing. Kenny, we had so many people looking for that word hope that showed up at that career fair. We had about over 250 folks walk through that uh, facility. Uh, we had it here in, locally here in Huntsville. But what I'll, what I'll say to you is it, Huntsville, it may be the mecca, but Huntsville is, is far-reaching because things that happen here in Huntsville affects Madison and also affects Athens and other surrounding cities. So having that career fair, you know, I thought it was awesome. And we do that. We're going to continue to do that just so we can be that beacon of hope for folks to know that there is an opportunity. So yeah. we have that every year. Well, that's a great thing, too, because people are often looking for work and they're wondering where are the jobs, where are the opportunities. They want to be able to see it again because they hear about opportunities, but you're kind of a connector, I guess, in some ways, too, where you bring people under this one roof and they have this one opportunity to share all this great information. Uh, I know this year you were focusing on people who did not have degrees. Correct. Well, Kenny, you know what? It's always, it's always focused on non-degreed personnel. Now, that's not saying that folks with degrees can't show up sure. because there'll be a lot of folks uh, looking for folks that uh, have degrees. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we had quite a few companies this year that were looking for folks with degrees. But, you know, again, go back to the premise of uh, the folks that don't have the hope or an opportunity. So we want to make sure that everyone has that opportunity, especially the folks without degrees. Yeah. So you can come through this, this uh, through, our, through our career fair and, um, and you can, um, um, this year you can find, made me want to go back into the workforce. <laughs> well, if you, co if you connect the whole notion of uh, success with a degree and you don't have a degree, yeah, then, then there's your hope. There's, there's it's no right hope. out the window. Yes, so I think yes. that you are all filling a niche as it relates to that. The Alliance for Opportunity and Development is doing some good things in this community. Tell people how they can contact you if you have a website, phone number. Okay, the website is simply aod-alabama.org. All right, so one more time. Tell them, because you said that real fast, so I want to make sure people wrote that down. <laughs> okay, you're right, Kenny. I did say that a little fast. It's aod-alabama.org. All right. And that website will give you any and everything you need to know about our organization. Outstanding. And uh, is there a phone number, or will they also be able to get the phone number on that website? We prefer that you go to the website. Well, drive that traffic there. Yes, yes, All yes. All right. Well, good. You've done a great job of that. And uh, we'll make sure that people will go to what website? AOD-Alabama.org. <laughs> All right. I think we've given them ample opportunities to write that down, and we'll also include that on the screen as well. Okay. Tony Russell is Secretary of the Alliance for Opportunity Development. Thank you for coming by today and talking with us. Thank you for having us, Kenny. John Bunham is a uh, board member. Correct. And, uh, we're very glad for the volunteer service that you provide to this agency because we know it's very valuable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it a lot. We want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast today. We hope that you'll join us for our next edition of Impact. In the meantime, have a great rest of the day, and we'll talk to you soon.